The best thing about autumn, if you ask me, is the feeling of a new start. It's not quite the fresh snow, icy, clean slate of 1st of January. It's more like hibernation with coffee and pondering our life goals in like a dark muffled room type of fresh. So a new chance to change things around a bit and most of all to create a new everyday cozy mundanity routine after all that like free falling stay up all night freedom of the summer months. So every autumn, just like every January, David and I do like a big reset. So this year I have like I think six things that I want to make some changes around from like diet and exercise to feeling stressed and hectic to like how I prioritize my time and the way like I look at myself and treat myself. So I feel like summer is for getting perspective on things through like a break from routine and autumn is then for implementing those like fresh perspectives into like an improved epic masterpiece of a new routine. You know what I mean? Do you also feel like autumn is like this, like a sort of let's get back to business Monday to Friday, creating new habits type of personal optimism? I am a romantic sucker for all things autumn. It's my favorite season, although I do tend to say that about every season, don't I? Except winter. Growing up in Sweden has like ruined winter for me forever. So autumn, new routine, getting into a ridiculously cozy, and utterly exciting and proficient Monday to Friday mundanity. So going over all of this with David before sitting down chatting to you today, I came up with six things that I feel like I want to change or improve or completely radically turn on its head in my life. And I will get into all of those six things individually. But the more we talked about it, because that's what we do, David and I, we go on these like 11K walks three times a week where we just talk about, well, you know, where we're at and where we want to end up and how to easiest and quickest go there. So the more we walked and talked, the more interesting and almost spooky our conversations got because this autumn, I feel like all the things I want to change or modify with my life, all six of those things that I mentioned, they kind of have the same underlying core problem. Like I can try to solve them as like six individual problems, but really they all stem from the same issue. So instead of trying and failing to deal with these like six symptoms that something is up, I want to go straight to the core and like fix the underlying problem. Because what I have noticed is that when I try to solve one of these six things, there is something making me fail to fix the problem. And it has made me like blame myself for not trying hard enough or not coming up with the right solution. But really, I think it's because I'm treating a symptom, not like the underlying issue. And that issue is so obvious that I'm almost ashamed to admit it. I'm too stressed and tired and overworked to have it in me to make much of an improvement or like big overhaul change to anything. I'm so tired in fact that all I want to do is eat popcorn and read my books. I definitely don't want to like implement big life changes and you know, get out of bed early. So until I have changed the situation, until I have like managed to create a daily and weekly setup that actually allows my brain to rest, none of the other things will be solved. I want to give a big thank you to BetterHelp for being a paid partner in this video. Autumn is already here and just like every autumn of every year, I always feel like this is a time of year to, you know, come up with some kind of strategy on how not to take on too much or overexert myself. But that's something that most of the time is quite hard to control when you're running your own business. And I understand that many of you are dealing with demanding jobs or staying on track with your studies. It's so difficult not to become stressed and lose sight of the essential aspects of life, isn't it? And balancing on that like thin line on the way to burnout. Regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or if you're just going through a tough time of keeping everything together sometimes, Therapy can help give you the tools to approach your life in a different way. And that's why I'm excited to today be teaming up with BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make starting therapy easier. And this is such an important job because finding a therapist can be hard. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a credentialed therapist in as little as a few days. They carefully make sure therapists on the platform are well qualified and their customer support team is there to help if you have any questions. Click the link in my description or visit betterhelp.com mustard. 
This link also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, so you can connect with a therapist and see whether it's something that's helpful to you and your situation. You can do it all from your phone or your computer via phone call, video chat or messaging, however you feel most comfortable. So if you're struggling and think you'd benefit from a therapy session, click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash mustard and get 10% off your first month of therapy. Thank you again BetterHelp for supporting this channel and now let's get back to the video. So that brings me nicely to the first of my six things that I want to reset or change. A feeling that life is too hectic. So this summer has been so lovely because yes, I have worked quite a lot and been really focused and like used my brain quite intensely, but my days have been slower and calmer in general. So like less other things to deal with, like admin inbox events and things that like pull me out of focus. And I've realized this about myself, that I'm at my absolute happiest, not when I have a thousand different things going on and I'm pulled in all these different directions and not when everything is slow and quiet and I don't have any work, but when I have a huge heavy project that I'm working out and then nothing else, just like one big demanding challenging job that takes up a lot of my focus. That's when I'm at my happiest. David is happiest with a million different small things and I definitely know people who are happiest when there's absolutely no work to do. But for me, give me a quiet room, a huge pot of tea and a big heavy brain consuming job and I will be calm and satisfied by the end of the day. But of course, life isn't nice that way. We can't really choose to only do the type of work that fits our brain best. But this autumn, I want to work towards creating a weekly routine that gives me as much time as possible in that quiet room with a huge pot of tea, working away at my big project, you know? What about you? Many small tasks, one big task, or no task at all? When are you at your happiest? The second thing on my list is something I don't feel the need to completely overhaul. It's more like a chance for slight improvement, diet and exercise. Because my everyday diet and exercise routine is goddamn great. Like early morning mat sessions, followed by afternoon walks and a healthy vegan diet that gives me so much energy and good skin and a nice hormone balance and all that. Like generally I feel great. The problem though, and this is what I meant with the underlying problem messing up everything else, is that on days when I'm particularly overworked or stressed, I just don't have the energy to like stick to my healthy routine. So I eat less healthy and I skip my afternoon walk and I use food as a way to treat myself because I'm feeling a bit sorry for myself for being so stressed, you know what I mean? Do you also do this? Like, actually I'm exaggerating a bit because it's not like I go order a pizza or eat six donuts just because I'm feeling stressed. It's just that I have a slightly less healthy day. It's still really quite good, but not as good as I would want. So when I have a normal work day, which is okay, quite heavy, but not like completely frantic, then sticking to my workouts and my healthy diet, just, it isn't like a chore or difficult in any way. It's just like everyday routine and it makes me feel good and I want to do it. So I'm mostly doing really good. Actually, I'm quite proud of keeping up like healthy eating, cooking at home and like rolling out that exercise mat for mornings per week, even though life is so hectic around here. So I'm not complaining. I just want to like slightly tweak. I want to be less overworked. So being healthy and taking care of my body is easy going every day. So where are you with your healthy eating and working out? Are you like me that it becomes like impossible to keep everything up when you're having a very stressful day? Or are you struggling to stay healthy also on non-stressful days? Let's talk in the comment and help each other out, you know? Or if you want, maybe I should actually make a video about like not just creating a healthy everyday routine, but sticking to it. And we can like discuss all of our troubles more in depth then. Let me know if you want me to make a video on that issue. This next one is a life changer. And I already know it's an epic lifestyle change for me because I've been trying it since like early summer. Basically, since I have two jobs, like being an influencer and being a novelist at once, and like I've just told you, I get really quite frantic by being pulled in different directions, and I much, much prefer sitting still with one big chunky task, David and I have now made the very healthy and responsible and mature decision to not look at work in days, you know, like 
today is an influencer day and today is a novel writing day and not even in weeks like we used to do it like this week I'll do influencer stuff and the next week novel stuff but from now on in double months so like these two months I'll be Jenny the influencer and the next two months I'll be Jenny the novelist obviously again life isn't nice that way so like both will spill over into each other's months for sure so there will be days when I have to like change roles back and forth to like meet deadlines and shoot videos or do author events and so I will have some like flexibility that way but in general just looking at my work two months at a time and not worrying what will happen with the other job while I'm doing this job so it's just like so so freeing and liberating and you know healthy so like May and June I did mostly influencer work and July and August I focused on my writing and now I'm back as you can see in my YouTuber mode. So what do you think? Isn't this just the most luxurious thing you've ever heard to like compartmentalize your different roles like this? And I mean I understand almost none of you watching this will start doing two months of this and two months of that because you don't have jobs that work that way but just the idea of having a chunk of time however small where you know what work you're supposed to do and being quite protective of your boundaries that way like this evening I'll work on my creative project and I won't like let social obligations or work or family stuff interfere with what I'm doing I'm allowing myself to have my complete focus on one thing at a time doesn't that sound just like heavenly like I can highly intensely recommend it. Distraction free focus on one thing at a time. It calms me down so much and makes me a more, you know, centered and grounded person. The next thing I want to improve on is again, not something that needs a complete overhaul. It's just minor tweaks. And that's my sleep cycle. So I've told you before that I really love it when I don't have to set an alarm. Like my body gets to like wake up from being rested, not from like a harsh ringing sound forcing me out of sleep. It's again a luxury and a luxury I really want to allow myself. But now we've had summer and with summer comes, you know, long light evenings and a lovely juvenile sense of freedom from obligation, you know what I mean? So I always sort of change my natural sleeping pattern to a bit later in summertime. So I've been going to bed maybe around midnight and waking up at like 7.30 or 8, which has been so decadent and like fitting for summer. But now I want to get back to that like cozy everyday Monday to Friday mundanity. And that for me means a reasonable sleep cycle of like 11 p.m. to 6.30 or 7 a.m. ish. So now I'm setting the alarm again, just until I've gotten back into the habit of turning my sleep back an hour. But as soon as I do, that alarm is out of there. Yuck, I hate alarms. A life without alarms is a life of great happiness. That's what I say. If you never set an alarm, if you never had to be anywhere at a specific time, what do you think that your natural sleep cycle would be? Are you like an early bird or are you more nocturnal? I think we all would be much happier and more like pleasant people if we listen more to our natural sleep preferences and try to find a way to like make that work without you know all those societal pressures telling us when to sleep. So next problem I just simply have to fix is a weird one. One thing that I've noticed and I just like stumbled on this realization is that a great thing for my mental just like well-being in general is to have a whole evening by myself in the flat. And I don't mean David doing something else in another room, but him actually being away, so I have the flat completely empty to myself. There's something about this, and I haven't quite figured it out yet because it's a new thing that I just stumbled on because David has started going out without me like once per week or so, and I've never had that in our relationship because we have the same friends and the same hobbies, and really we want to be together like as much as humanly possible but now finding myself in an empty flat like one night per week or so for like five hours just being me it is so strange it's such a strong feeling of I don't even know how to explain it it's like a feeling of absolute zero compromise like of not worrying about another person and making sure that he is all right and that he is happy because if David is home, even if we're in different rooms with our doors closed, I will still always like 
listen to see if I can hear him moving around or like I'm wondering if he's okay, you know what I mean? So when he goes out, it's like, you know what it is? It's like a quiet. So what I do is just like, I read for four, five, six hours straight, drinking kombucha or cremant, and I don't waste any time cooking dinner. I just like snack throughout the whole evening. And then like that, David is back home again. Like six hours just fly by. And by then I've just about started to miss him and I'm happy to see him again and go to bed together. This is the thing, I'm in my 30s and I've been with David for 18 years and somehow I have failed to realize before this spring that I have a need to be absolutely alone for a few hours every week. Not more, I wouldn't want to have like three evenings like this per week. One time is plenty, but it is needed and I find myself looking forward to this feeling of having a moment when I'm not like in a relationship to anyone else. So I ignore my phone, I focus on just myself and my reading, I don't know, the whole world goes just absolutely quiet. Like if you are never really alone, I think you should try this. It's like a whole new state of being. But enough about me, what's your autumn looking like? Do you also have problems to solve or like habits to tweak? You know, I always love when you tell me about like your struggles and like small everyday successes. So please do share where you're at. And also, what about your sleep cycle? Do you even know what your natural one would be if you never set an alarm? I think for me, most of the year, it's like 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., but I haven't truly experimented with this. Like I've never tried being nocturnal, for instance. I don't think that would fit me at all, but I haven't tried, so I can't know for certain. But you know, making this video in general was just so healthy for me. I love doing these because it makes me sit down and actually verbalize all of this like where I'm at and where I want to go so thank you for being here for me and listening to me you know discuss life and also do you want me to keep making these like routine videos do give me a like if you do and like please request upcoming videos to me as well I love to hear what interests you and what you want to discuss in future videos also of course don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet so that I will see you next week already Oh, and remember, if you're considering online therapy with BetterHelp, click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com mustard. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel. That's it for me. Thank you so much for spending time with me and wishing you the best and loveliest possible autumn ahead. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.